Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter. I'm grateful that you've chosen to join us as we gather in worship online today. Our congregation delights in welcoming and celebrating the diversity of our community. As we welcome people of all ages and races, gender identities and sexual orientations, you are welcome in this place. And we hope that you will participate as much as you're able. There's a worship guide you can download, pull up on a device or print out so that you can sing and pray along with us. We hope you will participate from home. And I hope that this hour will be an opportunity to know and experience the gift of our God and of divine love. May the peace of Christ be with you. Lord, we knew we would find you in gardens. We knew we would find you in water. We knew we would find you on mountain tops. We knew we would find you in wilderness. But God, we never expected to find you in a trough. In a marketplace. Among women. At dinner parties. On a cross. We, we expected, expected to, to find, find you in a tomb. tomb. And we still struggle to believe we can find you in our midst. We still struggle to believe that the matter of this world really matters to you. Still, you show up in your physical body with messy wounds to eat a real meal in the material world. You show up in a world that is degraded and scarred by the same forces that mocked and broke your body on the cross. You show up preaching a word of repentance and forgiveness to those who are broken and to those who break. Lord, we are the ones who are broken. Lord, we are the ones who break. Make us healers as you heal us. Find us in creaturely solidarity with you and with all of creation. Impel us to permeate the world with justice, equity, sustainability, and hope. Co-create with us your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture reading for today comes from Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel scripture today comes from John in chapter 10. It borrows a metaphor from Psalm 23, describing Jesus as a shepherd, inviting us to know and access God as one who shepherds. I invite you to listen here for the word of the Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O holy God, may my words and our thoughts and our lives reflect the fullness and beauty of your grace. We pray in your holy name. Amen. This week we celebrated the holiday of Earth Day, 
I don't know if celebrate is the right word, we marked the occasion of Earth Day in a season and time in the life of our planet when we humans are becoming increasingly aware of our need to change the ways we relate to one another and to the planet itself so that we might continue to have life, abundant life for all. Earth Day has a special place in my heart. It was the occasion of some of my first political engagement. In middle school is our community celebrated Earth Day in 1990. Some friends and I joined together in a petition to change something about our school lunch program, to change from using disposable styrofoam lunch trays to, well, we wanted to switch to washable ones. We didn't accomplished the change we hoped for, but we did get noticed and instigated some change from styrofoam to paper pulp. And I came to believe in the power and responsibility that I have, that we have together for being agents of change. On Earth Day every year then, I feel again that call to do something, to change something. And in this moment in the life of our planet, what we need to change is more whole scale, a change of orientation and attitude. And this week, as I was pondering again beloved scripture passages where God, where Jesus are described as being shepherds, I was considering the gift of this way of thinking about God's relationship to earth. The 23rd Psalm is such a beloved psalm. It's treasured by many of us, one of the few psalms that many of us know by heart. And although I delight in new translations, the one I memorized in my childhood was the King James translation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. This is language that I don't customarily use in my ordinary life, but something about these words, uh, laden with a kind of spiritual power, not only because of the, the strangeness of the terms used in King James English, but because of my memories of them having been recited at important events, in memorial services of beloved ones, in worship, in song, these words connect into a deeper place in my heart than ordinary language, a bit more like music. And I'm so grateful that we get to hear this psalm set to music this morning. I don't know if you also feel that same deep resonance that comes from these words, knowing how they bear an accumulation of spiritual power from our having inhabited them, spoken them, and heard them over moments and times in our lives where they have provided sustenance. I delight in how the psalm itself has offered this kind of nourishing foundation, this kind of care and holding, uh, and the way that it speaks of God as one who cares for and provides for us. The images of this psalm are so beautiful, and this week, as I've been pondering what they might have to say to us today, I've just been grateful to be able to sit with phrases from this beloved psalm. The Lord being shepherd is an image that invites us to know God as one who tends to us, who seeks our well-being, who wants to be protection and care, not in a way that in any way limits the distinctiveness of who we are as sheep, but that seeks our well-being as we inhabit this place. I think of the shepherd as one who knows the ways of the world, who knows the names of the sheep, who knows our personalities and distinctiveness and wants us to be well. The phrases of this psalm are so beautiful because they invite us also into a space of attention and gratitude. So many of the phrases in this psalm speak to me in this moment, but they also remind me of what has been and assure me of a promise of what will be. When the King James translation invites us to say, I shall not want, 
I think of it as a proclamation into this moment that invites me to know, to notice that I have what I need. That even in this moment of pandemic, when I'm aware of so much that I wish would be a little bit different, things that I could do again, activities I could resume, ways that my daily round would shift, even in the midst of so much that I want to change, that I have what I need. And in the midst of the ecological crisis that we fare, it we face, it is imperative to recognize when we can limit our desire for more. Our culture works on continually hungering for more, wanting to accumulate and achieve more. And given the way our Earth's resources belong together in this closed system, we, especially we, privileged North American Christians need to know when to say enough, to look around and notice that there is nothing we need, that I have enough. And so when I hear Psalm 23, when I echo its words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I hear an invitation to know and notice when my needs have been fulfilled when accumulating more won't make me happier. But it's also a promise because there are too many in our world, in our nation, in our own community, in our backyards who don't have enough, who want for basic things, who need safe shelter and access to health care and food for today. And so this verse comes to those in a position of need as an assurance of a promise of God, that God's vision for the world is one where everyone has enough, where we want for nothing that would provide basic security. It becomes then a psalm of hope, trusting in a God who loves us as a shepherd, who cares for and tends us, that God's vision for the world is one in which everyone has safety and security and food for the day, our daily bread and shelter for the night, and safety and protection from fear. As the psalmist continues, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I hear an invitation to inhabit this world and to notice its beauty. For a sheep, the green pastures and the still waters are not just places of beauty, but they are themselves the nourishment required for life. The green pastures are the food and the still waters are the water to nourish and quench every thirst. But God gives us this world not only with nourishment required to maintain life, but with such beauty and wonder that sustains delight and richness. And even in these days of so much uh, desire for things to change, so much anticipation of what will be, so much hunger for return to ordinary things, so much awareness of the deadly implications of disease and injury and illness and injustice, the invitation, the promise of walking, lying in green pastures, of coming to still waters, is one to notice and know beauty. And our care for one another, our care for the earth, is so much easier to give ourselves to when we know that it is good and beautiful. Life is easier to protect when we experience it as joy, when we see the beauty in ourselves and our neighbors, in the diversity of our communities, in the beauty of our environment, it changes our orientation to one that honors the beauty and particularity and goodness. In this moment in the life of the world, we need to notice beauty and goodness and life and joy in our neighbors, in all our diversity, and in the earth itself. And so this week, I invite you, I challenge you to look out for beauty and goodness and joy wherever it can be found, whether it's growing through a crack in the sidewalk 
or in an unexpected laughter, in moments of shared grief, or in moments of relief and song that sustain us in the long work for justice, I pray that you would know those green pastures and still waters, not only base nourishment, but joy and life and delight. The phrase that stuck with me most this week, though, is the next one. He restoreth my soul. He restores my soul, our New Revised Standard Version says. There's something powerful about a God who restores our being, our soul. The Hebrew translation of this scripture uses a word, uh, nefesh, here translated as soul, but which we might also receive as life, as if it meant breath. He restores our life. God restores our breath. This past week, I've been so attentive to the heaviness of grief for the murder of George Floyd. And I breathed a sigh of relief at the reading of a guilty verdict for the officer who killed him. I know that there is so much distance yet to cover in the work for justice, in overcoming the realities and danger of racism and white supremacy, but I breathed a small amount of relief this week that there is some accountability yet in our system. And I watched with joy the family of George Floyd as they not just breathed a sigh of relief, but shouted in joy. As I read this line of Psalm 23, he restores our soul, he restores our life, he restores our breath, I think of that joy. And when I think of breath, I think also of wind and air. And on this Earth Day, Sunday, as we think about our sharing in this common inhabitation, our being citizens together of this planet, I think of how wind and atmosphere give us a visual model for understanding something of our interconnection. I think of the searing images of wildfire smoke from last season's California wildfires as they blanketed so far reach here on our globe. I think of the movement of weather patterns that connect us together across vast differences as we imagine the earth itself breathing, as we understand the interplay of oxygen and carbon dioxide of human and animal life and plants and trees, we share together in a sort of planetary respiration and interchange of breath and life. So when God declares a restoration of life, it's one that we cannot possess individually uh, because breath is shared. It's been so hard in this year of COVID to imagine this life-giving power of breath knowing the danger of shared breath and respiration as a communication of disease. Still, there's something about our breathing that connects us together, that's both danger and opportunity. It certainly invites us to see that we belong together in one connection. And this Sunday, as we read again the words of Psalm 23, as we hear the promise of a God who restores our breath, I hope it comes as an assurance for the future and as good news in this moment, as, and as a reminder of how God has always acted in the world. Not only breathing breath into humanity at the beginning of creation, not only breathing new life into dry bones, but breathing the Holy Spirit onto the disciples as Jesus appeared in a locked room after his resurrection. Jesus sends us into the world with this shared common breath and keeps pushing us to see and understand that we belong to one another and with one another. And in this moment in the life of our planet, we need to understand that we exist not as individuals, but as shared community and not as isolated humanity, but as shared inhabitants of this creation that we might know together our belonging.
There's a new documentary released on Apple TV this week that documents the changes to the earth and its animals and systems during this pandemic year when human activity was more restrained. Toward the beginning of the film, it describes songbirds in San Francisco who have been singing not far from the Golden Gate Bridge, whose bird song had been drowned out by the noise of the city and traffic. And this year, as the cars were silenced, that bird song was audible in a new way. And it was discovered that the birds are singing new notes that hadn't been previously noticed. And I have to confess, as I watched these scenes in the documentary, uh, uh, an epiphany light bulb occurred in my mind because I had never really pondered how bird song is not just a beauty for me to enjoy, but a necessary communication for birds themselves. And how in this year of restrained human activity, the bird song carried further. And there's hope that endangered and threatened species might experience a year of unparalleled success as that bird song reached further than it ever had to attract mates from far away to give hope for a future generation. There's something beautiful and powerful about noticing how our song can change and how it can carry further when we hold ourselves back, when we limit ourselves, when we take notice of the context in which we're set, the beautiful and complicated uh, community that we share in. I pray this Earth Day for you, a restoration of who you are. After coming through a long and hard, challenging season during this pandemic, in the midst of awareness of racial injustice and inequity, in the midst of our own human challenges and family losses, in the midst of economic insecurity, in the midst of children being at home all day with their families, in the midst of it all, this morning, I hope you hear the promise of the psalm as restoration for your life, for your breath, for your very being. But I also hope that you know it's not for you alone, but for us as a community together, and for better and for worse, as a challenge and an opportunity, we are connected together. And so our restoration depends on the well-being of others. We belong together in the one body of Christ, and we share together in this one planet. In the words of our gospel text for today, Jesus insists that he is the good shepherd, a shepherd willing to lay down his life for the sake of others. He challenges the hearers of these words with the difficult news that there are other sheep elsewhere and that he loves and cares for them too and that they will become one flock together. This is how the good news of the gospel always works. It comes to us exactly where we are, and it assures us that we are known and loved and cared for. But it pushes back against our remaining complacent in that, as if we were an exception from the rule, it forces us to accept that that same love is for others as well. And so we're invited together to a new way of being, together, the sheep of that good shepherd, the ones invited to share at a table prepared for us in the very presence of our enemies. In this way, the psalm, the good news of our God, forces us to recognize that while we were busy fixating on who our enemies were, our God was providing a table, a bountiful abundance for us. In this moment, may you see what we have here. May you know and delight in the world as it is. May you breathe deeply in a God who desires to give restoration of breath, not only for us, but for all the earth. And may we participate in the work of restoration, of giving life to one another for the sake of God. May it be so. Amen.
Gracious Lord, we come to you again after facing a world full of perplexing events and difficult decisions. Once again, we see troubled persons with firearms wreak havoc in places we hoped were safe, and a troubled mother takes the lives of her own children. Just as we think justice may be served in one community, other incidents show us just how far we still have to go. We look to you for guidance in how to respond when the world seems so out of control. Jesus taught us about the responsibility of the Good Shepherd to mind the flock no matter what happens. There are many who find themselves outside the fold, or we may think them not to be our responsibility. May we remember that everyone is your child and in need of our love and care. As we look to the future, Help us to teach our children to make this a better place. Walter Mondale spoke of being raised by a Methodist minister father, constantly hearing about doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. May our children find in us examples of kindness, justice, humility, and trust in the amazing grace of your presence. We give thanks for this congregation trusting that whether we are together in person or remotely, we remain a place where all are welcome into your fold. May we remember to trust in the words of Paul, that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. 
This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Thank you for being with us for worship today. I hope you have felt the presence of divine love here. And I hope that you will continue to go deeper in your life of faith as we seek to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly together. There are opportunities to go deeper in connection to this congregation, and the easiest way to be tuned into what they are is to read our weekly e-news that comes out on Friday. It has details about how to participate in things coming up and some thoughts on faith and life. You can sign up for that or share prayer concerns with us at westwoodumc.org connect. I also wanted to share with you just a little bit about the conversation regarding when we'll return to in-person worship. At our church council meeting this past Wednesday evening, we created a small group of people who will proceed through the plan for reopening, prepare the details required by our uh, area denomination and public safety so that we can gather again in space. We intend to continue to share our worship virtually as well, knowing that the members of our community and are in different places about when they can come back. We anticipate and hope that we might be able to return to in-person worship uh, around the time that our state reopens. Uh, we're heading toward uh, sometime in June, and we hope that you will be able to continue to join us in our life together. Now, as we conclude our hour together today, I pray that the peace of Christ would be with you, that the call and love of a God known as shepherd might invite you to be one who participates in the work of offering rest and restoration, breath and life, not only for your sake, but for the sake of all creation. May it be so. Amen.